fibers. If researchers succeed, a carbon nanotube space ribbon may finally make space travel routine, opening the way for the construction of research labs, hotels, offices, and even entire colonies. Edwards believes that in less than 50 years, tens of thousands of travelers will be riding a space elevator. It'll be tourists, it'll be more general public, in addition to workers, people going up for business, uh, scientists going up for studies. It's a very realistic scenario. A world based on energy-hungry technology needs fuel sources beyond oil. How about a man-made sun or ice from the bottom of the sea. Two weeks before shutdown, solar panel experiments aboard the space station take an unexpected turn. What happened? I'm not sure. It seems to be acting up again. The computer is fine. I just checked it yesterday. Then why did it spike? I'll scan the drives again. I'll be right back. Hello, Dr. Wang. Secretary Luo. What can I do for you, sir? Our base station informs me. You had pretty impressive results. Actually, sir, it's a false alarm. We're checking the equipment. Dr. Wang, when you do get a breakthrough, I want the data first. But there will be a breach of space law. And besides, Dr. Dr. Sanders... Wang, you're an officer of the Chinese army, and you will do as your orders. Due to the worldwide energy crisis, the United States and China have entered a third round of emergency talks on Central Asian gas and oil supplies. The European Union will mediate. Experts speculate the U.S. may be forced to tap into its strategic reserves. After the last oil crisis, the United States needed an energy insurance policy. So it created the Strategic Oil Reserve, consisting of hundreds of millions of barrels of oil, enough to run the entire country for 60 days. Great. But what happens when the world's usable oil supply completely runs out sometime in the next 50 years? What then? That's why researchers are focusing on solar power. Other researchers go farther. They want to create their own sun. Sunlight starts with a bang. When two hydrogen atoms collide, they fuse to create a helium atom and release intense energy. The process is called nuclear fusion. If we could recreate that reaction, we'd never have to drill for another barrel of oil. But creating fusion is not easy. The difficulty of reproducing fusion on Earth is like trying to light wet matches. It's a very complicated task. But we've made real progress in the last couple of decades. At Germany's Max Planck Institute, scientists are using microwaves, electricity, and high particle beams to generate cosmic heat inside a test reactor. The chamber would incinerate, if not for a magnetic field that keeps superheated atoms from hitting the walls. Enormous pressure and at temperatures over 100 million degrees, the hydrogen atoms are fusing in a superheated gas. A single gram of it would set free the same amount of energy as 11 tons of coal. But the superheated gas cools down too quickly. These scientists can only recover about a third of the energy they put into the system. The potential is great but a viable fusion reactor may be 50 years off or more. So scientists are designing ingenious methods to tap renewable energy. Huge, super-efficient windmills on land and vast wind farms far offshore. 
Intelligent buoys that capture the energy of waves and tides. Underwater turbines that harness the power of local rivers. And farm-grown biomass to create fuels such as ethanol or biodiesel. If these alternate energy sources don't produce enough, there is another fossil fuel we could turn to in a pinch. It lies beneath the ocean. When organic particles in the sediment decay, they create methane gas. Under intensely high pressure and near freezing temperatures, the gas combines with water and is encased in ice. It's called a gas hydrate. And this ice burns just like coal. Scientists estimate that gas hydrates worldwide exceed the total reserves of oil, gas, and coal combined. The challenge is extracting it. You would think that a diving robot with remote control arms and cameras would do the trick. But it's not that easy. When the robot heads to the surface, the water pressure drops, the temperature rises, and the ice melts. The gas hydrate escapes. But even if we could extract it, gas hydrates pose another problem. Burning methane releases carbon dioxide and accelerates global warming. Aboard the space station, scientists are still hoping for a last minute breakthrough. Hello, Paula. Hi, Bob. How goes it? Yeah, you know, still plugging away. Maybe this will help. Ah, oh, my coffee. Thank you. You're the best. Hey, besides the photovoltaic generator, we just found out we're having problems with the steering element on the laser beam. Yeah, sorry, but I have to stick to my work order. No extras because of the shutdown. You think maybe you can do it off the record? In 2057, competition for natural resources could lead the world's most powerful nations into conflict. Authorized to proceed. Unless science can provide a way out. You have exactly four hours. In 2057, oil supplies are running low. Now, a summer heat wave deepens the crisis. Hospitals in Beijing and Shanghai are running on emergency power. Gas stations have lines half a mile long. China's leaders begin planning for the worst. What do you suggest, Admiral? Take what's right for the hours. Occupy the central Asian oil fields. Not yet. They'll mean all-out war. I suggest more indirect action. Such as? Let our friends in Central Asia deal with this situation. You don't need a crystal ball to see that the superpowers of the future will be the United States and China. And there's an excellent chance that they'll be on friendly terms with one another. But consider this fact. The Chinese economy is growing exponentially, and so is its demand for energy. One estimate is that China will need to build four middle-level power plants per week for the next 50 years just to keep up with energy demands. So it's not too difficult to see that in the future, these superpowers will be competing fiercely for markets, natural resources, and most importantly, oil. As you know, several strategic gas and oil pipelines in Kazakhstan were seized last night. That means that delivery of our new supplies is now blocked. Mr. President, my team at National Security is putting together a full report. In the meantime, Dr. Fleming has an update on our energy status. Current supplies are good for eight to ten weeks, after which we'll have to tap into the strategic reserves. Either way, further electricity rationing seems inevitable, 
as do car-free weekends. Not exactly a catchy re-election slogan. Sir, do we know who's behind the raids on the pipelines? The CIA is still investigating. Sir, the military is operating under the assumption China staged the whole thing. That's entirely plausible, but we must proceed with caution until we've established all the facts. No overt military action. May I suggest we send the surveillance and acquisition platoon from our Japanese base? Authorized to proceed. Last night, heavily armed masked bands took control of gas and oil pipelines in the troubled regions west of China. The U.S. government has strongly condemned their actions. We'll be back with more details after a short break. You're right. The computer's not broken. But what caused that 83% spike? No idea. My data got corrupted when the structure fell apart. Let's rerun that last test. See what happens. Okay? Okay, I'll see you guys. Wait. Wait, let me give you a hand. Photo generator running okay? Good as new. Laser? What can I say? I'm a hero. I hope I didn't waste your time. With the shutdown and everything. You can't quit on me now. The mechanics are taking bets on you guys. What? Yeah. What kind of odds they have on us? Hi. But I like long shots. X-rays, penicillin, Velcro. Sometimes the greatest scientific discoveries happen by chance. I think I know what happened. What? The neutralizer interacted with the test fluids and created a new molecular structure. You think that's what happened? Let's add one drop at a time. You got it. The cross-contamination of fluids may have created a more efficient molecule. But can they reproduce their results? watching. Well, you go talk to them. I'm sure I'm going to get a phone call myself. Hello, Lee Chow. So glad it's you. Where are you? In a hotel room. What's going on? Don't worry. Your wife is fine. A situation that could change very, very quickly. You'll get the data first. That will no longer be sufficient. The Americans cannot have it at all. But Dr. Sanders is working on it now. Then you have to figure out a way to destroy it. You have exactly four hours. Mr. President, I request permission to put all our forces in Central Asia on standby. Permission granted. With global tension on the rise, special forces will be activated, wearing flexible body armor that turns bulletproof on impact, and even makes them invisible.